All right, guys, thank you for that next carrier update. Right now, we're going to welcome our next live guest, We've got John Gamero, CEO and co-founder of Freight Vana. And John, thank you for joining us today. Hey, good morning, guys. Good morning, so, John. We'll go for it, Anthony. <laughs> You're up. Go for it. So today, we're talking about the M&A space, and I'm excited about this conversation. As you can see, just jumping in here, what's been changing? What's the space going to look like on the verge of a potential freight recession? What are some of your initial takeaways here? Yeah, you're certainly um, getting into a, a market where consolidation makes sense. I think in, in a stronger rate environment, um, it doesn't take as much coordination, sharing of resources, or really having to tightening, tighten your belt from a, a, a purchase price and savings perspective um, to run and run profitably. So there becomes more of a premium on coordinating on things like purchasing equipment, purchasing fuel, um, we've certainly seen um, for small and mid-sized carriers, the price of insurance move up dramatically. Um, so being able to really focus on the profit side of the equation, uh, in addition to running and running um, for good freight revenue, it's becoming meaningfully more important uh, in this market. And that sets up for a lot of consolidation. So we knew when the market started to take this downturn that the little guys were going to be the ones that were affected first. And for some of them, their initial thought was, okay, I'm just going to stop running. I'm going to take my trucks off the road because it's not profitable. Some of them are trying to work through it. And some of them might now be sitting on that fence of, okay, do I get myself ready to be acquired? Do I look at moving into this consolidation space? If you're on that fence trying to decide, you know, should I set myself up for success in an acquisition? How do you make yourself look very attractive to people who might be interested? in acquiring you yeah it's, it's a great it's a great question I think really being able to take a step back and understand and communicate the story of your business is one of the more important uh, the important steps you can do so checking to make sure that your your files are in order that you have a clear view of how your how your trucks have operated where they have operated and what profitability looks like is one of the bigger communication steps um, the the other is you know, if, if you have individuals that you've worked with in the past, so this could this could be uh, in your hometown or other trucking companies that, that you respect, um, rekindling those conversations. M and A is generally not something uh, that happens like like buying a house or buying a car. It takes um, it takes months to get to a place where two parties can agree uh, that a union makes sense. So I think really asking yourself who are the partners that you'd want to work with um, in, in the future. And if you don't have that list, working with, with an advisor uh, can be really helpful at testing those waters. So last summer, it seemed like, was the summer of huge acquisitions in the space. I'm thinking of the Night Swift AAA Cooper merger. I'm thinking of the Uber, um, Uber Freight Transfix or Transplace merger. Um, so talk a little bit about what we can expect in the difference between two summers, right? It's going to kind of be this tale of two summers. Are we going to expect to see the huge mergers and acquisitions once again? Or is it going to be these companies who are maybe now starting to almost like kind of pick off the smaller ones? Yeah, I think I think you'll see more what's what's referred to in our sector as roll up and consolidation. There's always quietly been um, a lot of M&A activity happening in our sector. So you look at the, the drayage sector, um, Road One acquires five to seven uh, intermodal drayage companies a year, but they, they may be, you know, sub sub 50 or sub 75 uh, power units. So you'll see more of that. Um, as people try to move off of playing a little bit of pin the tail on the donkey on what's peak and, and what's trough from a production uh, earnings profitability perspective, testing that out, it generally makes the larger M&A harder. Um, but one of the things I said earlier is if you clearly can communicate how your network has been constructed and what your go-to-market has been with your customers, meaning have you been someone that has ran uh, a significant portion of your freight tied to the spot market um, and freight that has constricted dramatically in the last three months? Or have you been a carrier that has run largely committed and contract freight that hasn't con 
contract it as much and you can communicate much more rate and profitability stability going forward. I think you're able to navigate that. But as people, right, as rates come down and profitability struggles, especially for the smaller carriers, I do think you're going to see more tuck-ins uh, and roll-up strategies in our space from an M&A perspective. And John, we spoke to, just earlier you spoke to how to really make yourself look more appealing as a smaller operator or a smaller player in this space. What are going to be some of the strategies as an acquirer in this space as you're looking at potentially being rolling up some companies here? I mean, when you look at what we're looking at within the freight recession or potential freight recession, potentially the longer you wait, maybe you can get a little bit of a better deal. Um, there are so many different variables that go into this. What are going to be some of the key things that you're watching? Yeah, so I think the first thing is that valuations, this, this is not an industry like um, software as a service or technology or um, high flying tech where it, it trades at mul like meaningful multiples um, of profitability. The bookmarks in, in our industry tend to be pretty tight. Um, so waiting and trying to time for a, perf a perfect deal to me oftentimes is a fool er fool's errand. I think as a buyer, Similarly to uh, the sellers where I said get organized on your files, you can really as a buyer get organized on your process. So understanding what's important to you, um, what core strategy, what core um, rollout or network you want to build, or what additional services you want to offer uh, to your customers and customer set. If you have that strategy defined, as well as the, the checklist and the approach of what's important to you from a diligence perspective laid out before you start, then you know the right questions to ask and you can try to streamline a process at a time that for sellers uh, is already highly stressful and they're focused on the whirlwind every day of what it's going to take uh, to rub two pennies together. You having clear view of what's important and not inundating a seller with a list of 100 items, but pare it down to your top 15, your top 20 uh, is, is really, uh, really important. And so speaking of growth in the sector, you guys at Freight Vaughn are continuing to grow. I'm watching your guys' LinkedIn, watching Shannon and Josh's LinkedIn as well, seeing a ton of job postings from you guys. If people want to get in touch with y'all at Freight Vaughn and maybe want to capitalize on some of the growth opportunities you guys have, where can they go to do that? So they can reach out to me, john.gamero at freightvana.io. And it's interesting because at, at Freightvana, um, our worlds do collide that through the advisory, one of the things that we do is analyze and work with our carriers on what network of freight. I mentioned the, the dependency on spot versus contract carriers, or sorry, contract customers. And, and that's something that we're able to um, take information, analyze, and try to show up as a good partner, not only in the M&A advisory, but also um, through Freightvana and a network analysis. Awesome, John, thanks so much for joining us this morning. It's always great to have Freightvana on Freightwaves TV. Thank you, guys. Have a good long weekend. Good long, safe weekend. You as well, John. And head to their LinkedIn if you guys want to check out some of those opportunities. That you can just search Freyvana, search Shannon Breen, search John or Joshua Breeze as well. Right now, we're going to head over to Sydney Edwards. She has our next check of our headlines for your day.